what, what the lady's talking about. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, family? Man, Quincy Jones done set it off. In an interview with Vulture, he told some secrets that normally people take to their grave, and some of the people who he mentioned did take those secrets to their graves, but I guess Quincy said, I ain't gonna be one of them. I'm gonna let them know right now so I can see what the reaction is. And he getting a hell of a reaction. This got to be the interview of the century. Damn the year, damn the decade. I don't care what interview come after this. This is going to be up there right there with all of the great interviews. Just because of the, the people that's involved that he was talking about that's being mentioned in this interview. I took the liberty of highlighting some of the things that really, really, really stood out that I know that's going to have people tripping. He talked about John F. Kennedy knowing the killer of John F. Kennedy. And he said that killer was a guy by the name of Sam Giacana, a Chicago mobster. He said the connection there was between Sinatra, the mafia, and Kennedy. Joe Kennedy, John F. Kennedy's dad, he said was a bad man. And he came to Frank to have him talk to Giacana about getting some votes. So I don't know, maybe he went and got the votes and he didn't get what was promised to him or whatever. I don't know. When asked about his take on rock music, he told the interviewer, rock ain't nothing but a version of rhythm and blues, motherfucker. You know, I met Paul McCartney when he was 21. He said the Beatles were terrible musicians. They were the worst musicians in the world. They were no playing motherfuckers. Paul was the worst bass player I ever heard. And Ringo, don't even talk about it. I remember one. <laughs> Once, we were in the studio with George Martin, and Ringo had taken three hours for a four-bar thing he was trying to fix on a song. He couldn't get it. We said, mate, why don't you get some lager and lime, some shepherd's pie, and take an hour and a half and relax a bit? So he did, and we called Ronnie Verrill a jazz drummer. Ronnie came in for 15 minutes and tore it up. Ringo comes back and says, George, can you play it back for me one more time? So George did, and Ringo says, that didn't sound so bad. I said, yeah, motherfucker, because it ain't you. <laughs> Damn. Okay, when it comes to Jimi Hendrix, he said that Jimi Hendrix was afraid to play with his band because he was intimidated because they were so good. And he says that Paul Allen, a Microsoft uh, co-owner, was just as good of a guitar player as Jimi Hendrix was. Uh, that, that was something new to me. Uh, when asked about racism, he starts getting a little bit more serious about racism. He says that uh, the interviewer asks, asks him, uh, what stirred up everything? Is it all about Trumpism? And he says, it's Trump and uneducated rednecks. Trump is just telling them what they want to hear. I used to hang out with him. He's a crazy motherfucker. Limited mentality. A megalomaniac. Narcissistic. I can't stand him. I used to date Ivanka, you know. Dude say you used to date Ivanka Trump? He said, yeah, when he was... 72, and she was 24. He said, yes, sir, 12 years ago. Tommy Hilfiger said, Ivanka wants to have dinner with you. I said, no problem, she's a fine motherfucker. She had the most beautiful legs I ever saw in my life. Wrong father. Yeah, uh, no surprise dad with dating Ivanka, you know. Think about her daddy, you know. You know, women are usually attracted to the type of men who their daddy is and uh, not all qualifications of course but uh, similarities there okay and here's the one man this one broke my heart man Marlon Brando had sex with James Baldwin Richard Pryor 
and Marvin Gaye. Now, James Baldwin, no surprise. Rich Pryor, no surprise. But Marvin Gaye, oh man, I will never ever listen to sexual healing and what's going on the same again. Damn. Oh man. He said that uh, Brando used to go cha-cha dancing with him and his crew. Uh, he said he could dance his ass off. He was the most charming motherfucker you ever want to meet. Uh, he'd fuck anything, anything. He'd fuck a mailbox. And that's when he said James Baldwin, Richard Pryor, Marvin Gaye. And dude was like, he slept with them? How do you know that? He said, come on, man. Come on, man. Now, this revelation was backed up by Richard Pryor's wife, his widow. This is what his widow, Jennifer Lee Pryor, had to say about Richard Pryor's sexuality. She said, she told TMZ that Richard had lots of sex in the 70s with men and women, including Marlon Brando, thus corroborating Quincy Jones's story. Uh, when asked if Richard did, in fact, have sex with Brando, Jennifer said it was the 70s. Drugs were still good, especially quaaludes. If you did enough cocaine, you'd fuck a radiator and send it flowers in the morning. Jennifer told TMZ that Richard would not mind Quincy Jones spilling the tea, and he would not be embarrassed because he was always open with his friends and his bisexuality. She said that Richard Pryor documented his sexuality in, uh, extensively in his personal diaries, which she planned to release later this year. Oh man, my damn head starting to hurt. Ah. Oh man. Bono says that when he hangs out in Ireland, he goes to uh, Bono's, he stays at Bono's castle because Ireland is very racist toward blacks. Um, asked about uh, humanitarian work. And he said, you know, he, the interviewer asked him, is, is humanitarian work getting any better uh, than it was 50 years ago? And he says, no. We're the worst we've ever been, but that's why we're seeing people try to fix it. Feminism, uh, women are saying they're not going to take it anymore. Racism, people are fighting it. God is pushing the bad in our face to make people fight back. In terms of religion, he said, the Catholics have a religion based on fear, smoke, and murder. And the biggest gimmick in the world is confession. You tell me what you did wrong and it'll be okay. Come on. And almost everywhere you go in the world, the biggest structures are the Catholic churches. It's money, man. It's fucked up. Those are just excerpts. Those, that's just what I pulled away from it. Go check out the interview yourself, man. And it's, it's, it's a hell of a read. It's going gonna, it's gonna to trip you out. Now for people out there that are saying, man, he got to watch his back. You better watch his back. This is his quote. He said, in terms of being fearful about what he's saying, he said, I've got nothing to be scared of, man. That's how he laid it out. That's the one thing about age, man. When you get to be a certain age, you don't give a fuck what you say, man. You don't care how anybody take it. And you don't care what comes back. It's like, man, I've lived and I'm tired of faking it. I'm tired of lying. Some of us could try that. No more talk. What the ladies talking about?